everyone and welcome back to another video or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I post easy, accessible and delicious vegan recipes. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to subscribe for more yummy content. Today we are talking all things pumpkin. If you live in the United States, as soon as fall rolls around, this huge pumpkin craze starts. Everything is pumpkin spice flavored. There's pumpkin in a ton of recipes. And my job as a recipe developer is just to give the people what they want. So today I am rounding up some of my favorite pumpkin recipes on the blog. We have eight different recipes that are both sweet and savory. You can have them for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or dessert. We've got something for you in this video. I guarantee, unless you are a pumpkin hater, then maybe just get this one. All the full recipes will be linked down below. And also I have a full pumpkin roundup blog post as well that has 20 different recipes. So there's even more on the blog. Be sure you check that out. And lastly, before we get into the video, I just want to say I also have a blog post on how to make your own pumpkin puree because in the United States, we can get this easily in a can, but I know in other countries, it's not the same. And sometimes you don't even have access to pumpkin. So I have a full detailed post as well as an instructional video on how to make your own. You can use in any of these recipes. And I also included substitutions. So if you can't get pumpkin, what you can use instead. So be sure to check that out. But for now, let's get to cooking. First, we're going to keep things pretty simple and make some pumpkin spice latte overnight oats. This recipe is perfect for a meal prep and weekday breakfast. It comes together with only a few simple ingredients. So to start out, we'll mix all of our wet ingredients together to give this a latte flavor. We're going to be using some coffee and plant-based milk. I am using brewed hot coffee and coconut milk, but you could also use cold brew and your favorite dairy or non-dairy milk, not dairy milk as well. Let's keep it vegan folks. Anyways, now we're adding in pumpkin puree and some maple syrup to sweeten things up. And then I also personally love to add a little bit of lemon juice with pumpkin flavored things. I find that it helps to brighten the flavor a lot. And then we're also adding in pumpkin pie spice and vanilla extract, and you're just going to whisk all of this together until you get a nice thick and creamy wet mixture. The spices don't have to be totally mixed in. So now we're going to add in our oats. I like to use a combination of quick cooking and rolled oats. I find it gives a creamier texture. And then you wanna thicken it somehow in this recipe. I like to use ground flax, but you could also use chia seeds too. So you can just mix this together and then let it sit for a few minutes where it will thicken a little bit more and then you can store it and serve it however you like. So for example, you can put it in some glass mason jars and take it on the go. Or if you're eating from home, you can deck it out with all your favorite toppings here I did some sliced banana almond butter a little bit more pumpkin pie spice and a drizzle of maple syrup but like chocolate chips cacao nibs all those things would be great too Next up, we're going to be making pumpkin apple muffins, combining the pumpkin part of fall and the apple part of fall, which are two of my favorite seasonal flavors. Again, this recipe is super simple. We're going to be using a base of oat flour. And then for this one, I decided to make my own pumpkin pie spice um, and combine it with baking powder, but you could also use a store-bought blend if you wanted to. We're also adding in some baking soda there and just basically whisk everything together until evenly distributed and set aside. And now we'll work on our wet ingredients. So we're we're going to be using some coconut sugar, some plant-based milk, and then a can of pumpkin puree, or again, you could use homemade pumpkin puree if you wanted to. And then we're also adding some apple cider vinegar here. This is going to help curdle the milk, make it more buttermilky, and it also reacts with the baking soda in the oven to make your muffins even fluffier. It helps to give the rise that an egg traditionally would because, you know, the acid reacts. It's cool, science, yay. Anyways, mix it together to form a batter and then last but not least, we'll fold in an apple. I like to grate my apple because I find that it melts into the batter more than like chunks of apple and I wanted more of a smooth texture here. So then now you're just going to line a muffin tin with some paper liners, or you could just grease them if you wanted to, and just plop that batter in, and then put these in the oven, and you're good to go. They'll get a nice rise and turn nice and golden, and then you can just remove these and set them on a cooling rack, or you know if you're really impatient, you can dig in right away, but they have the best fluffy texture if you let them cool first. These are really great as is. You could also drizzle them with icing sugar, or have them with a dollop of nut butter or some vegan butter on the side as well. Either way, they hit the spot, they're super satisfying, and you can store the leftovers in your freezer if you make a little bit too many. 
Now let's take a savory turn. We're going to make some chipotle sweet potato and pumpkin soup. This is an older recipe on my blog, but it never fails to satisfy. So to start, we're going to warm some vegetable broth in a pot over medium high heat and then add in some diced red onion and saute it until it's translucent. And then we'll go ahead and add in some garlic and our spices. I'm using smoked paprika, chipotle powder, cumin, and salt. So we'll toast these in the pan for a little bit. Oh, I wanted to mention, if you wanna use oil, you can too, but I'm keeping this recipe oil-free. You do you. After the spices are toasted, we'll add in some diced sweet potato, plus some pumpkin puree, and then we'll thin it all out with some creamy coconut milk and then some vegetable broth for extra flavor. I like to use the combination of sweet potato and pumpkin because I find that it adds more of a rich, complex flavor to the soup. The sweet potato adds more sweetness while the pumpkin is nice and nutty and creamy too. So we're going to bring this to a boil and simmer it until the sweet potato is fork tender like you can see here. And then you can transfer this to a blender and carefully blend Blend it or you can just use an immersion blender like I am using here until you get a nice thick and creamy soup. The soup is on the thicker side but if you wanted to thin it out with more vegetable broth you could totally do that too and you can serve this as is. If you want to get a little fancy you can save some of that coconut milk and then swirl it on top of your soup. If you want to get a little abstract arty you can also top this with croutons or just serve it with a side of toasted bread. Either way it's really delicious and satisfying and again meal prep friendly. Next, we're going to go with another savory recipe and let's make some creamy pumpkin risotto. You do not need animal products to make a good risotto, contrary to popular belief. The first thing we're going to do is warm up our broth on the stove top, but before we warm it up, we're also going to whisk in some pumpkin puree. This helps infuse the pumpkin flavor into the risotto as we cook it. So go ahead and whisk that together and then warm it up on the stove. And now we'll start on our risotto. First, you're going to start by warming some oil in a pan, and then I am frying some sage leaves in the pan first. This helps to flavor the oil and then you can also use these as a fun garnish once the risotto is finished cooking. So just carefully cook them until they become sort of translucent and then we can go ahead and set them aside. And now we'll go ahead and saute some shallots garlic and chopped herbs in the pan. Again, making a base of aromatic flavor. Once it has sauteed for a bit, we'll add in some nutmeg and saute that again until it's nice and toasty. And then we'll go on to the risotto part. I'm using arborio rice, which is classic and pretty essential for a classic risotto. It cooks differently than white rice, so I highly suggest getting this and not using white rice because this gets a creamier overall texture. So we're going to toast that for a bit and then we'll deglaze the pan with some white wine. If you don't drink alcohol or cook with it, you can also just deglaze it with some of that vegetable broth. But once the white wine starts to evaporate, We'll start adding our pumpkin broth to the pan and cooking it down. So the key with risotto is you always want the risotto to kind of be at a simmer and you want to add warm broth to it so it doesn't cool down too much. And as you can see here, the risotto is done cooking that round and you know when to add more broth. When you drag the spoon through the risotto and you see a line, it's called la onda, which is like a wave, which is the Italian word for wave. And basically you just keep cooking it until the risotto is nice and tender. So then to finish it all off, we're going to season it with a little bit of grated vegan Parmesan cheese. You could also use nutritional yeast, but I personally just love using store-bought vegan cheese for this. And I'm also going to season it with some black pepper to add a little bit of spice. And then it's ready to serve. This is super thick, creamy, and satisfying. I topped mine with some pumpkin teas, Parmesan, and that fried sage leaf. And then you're ready to dig in and enjoy. Now we're going to go a little bit more fuss free, but still really delicious and make some pumpkin mac and cheese. So first we're going to get started on our pumpkin cream sauce. This comes together really easily in a blender. You'll just need some pumpkin puree, some soaked cashews, nutritional yeast, garlic, and oil. You can skip the oil, but it really makes the sauce nice and silky. Then we're also adding in nutmeg, salt, and about four cups of water. Then you're going to blend this all up until you get a nice, thick, and creamy pumpkin cheesy sauce. Honestly, I could use it as a dip. It's really delicious, but today we're making it in mac and cheese. So go ahead and set that aside. 
And now in a nine by 13 casserole dish, we'll just combine everything together. So it's a no boil recipe, you use dry pasta. We're just adding a little bit of shallot and then diced pumpkin here. But if you don't have fresh pumpkin near you, you can also use another hard squash like kabocha squash or butternut squash or even sweet potato. And then super simple guys, that's why I love this recipe. You're just gonna pour that pumpkin cream sauce on top and then press all the noodles down. You want them to be nice and submerged. And then you can go ahead and cover your casserole dish. Mine has a lid, but you can also just use aluminum foil and and bake it in the oven and it gets even better because we're making sourdough rosemary breadcrumbs so at the same time that we put that pasta in the oven you're also going to put some sourdough bread in the oven and toast it for around 20 minutes or so until it becomes nice and hard and golden and break it up into sort of irregular pieces and then transfer them to a food processor i like to use irregular pieces because it gives you more of an irregular texture in your breadcrumbs and they don't turn into total dust we're also going to add some rosemary and salt and black pepper to our breadcrumbs and then we're going to give these a good pulse until they get the fine breadcrumb texture that you're looking for. And then at this point, as you can see here, they sort of look like panko breadcrumbs. Some are a little bit bigger. We'll add in some olive oil and then pulse it again. This helps the breadcrumbs stick together and they also toast more in the oven after you add the olive oil. Honestly, these breadcrumbs are so good. I want to put them on like everything. So they're optional technically, but I personally believe you shouldn't skip them. So after about 45 minutes, your casserole should look something like this. The sauce sort of naturally gravitates to the top. So the first thing we're going to do is just mix it all together to distribute the sauce. The sauce will also thicken slightly as it cools. If you're not adding the breadcrumbs, you can sort of just stop here and then dig in. But like I said, the breadcrumbs are highly recommended. So we're going to sprinkle our breadcrumbs on top and then put this back in the oven for another seven to 10 minutes until the breadcrumbs become fragrant and golden. And then all that's left to do is serve and enjoy. My favorite part of this is the chewy noodles with all the crunchy breadcrumbs on top. They're just so satisfying, like that corner piece of lasagna. But this recipe looks really fancy, but it's honestly really hands off and good enough for a weeknight meal. Now we're going to go ahead and make some pumpkin chili. I love chili and I think adding pumpkin is a great way to get in some extra veggies, but it's still really hearty and a great source of plant-based protein. So to start out for our pumpkin chili, we're going to pull some cremini mushrooms in a food processor until they're pretty finely chopped. This isn't traditional for most chili, but I find it gives a nice meaty texture to it, so I like to do it. And then we'll go with the classic, you know, chili steps. We're going to saute some onion and oil. I'm also adding in some red bell pepper there. And then you can go ahead and add in your chopped mushroom with garlic and a bunch of cozy chili spices Again, I believe we have chili powder, smoked paprika, cumin, pretty similar to the soup, but also different. So I'll take that for a bit and then we'll add in some beans and tomatoes and our can of pumpkin puree. I don't know about you guys, but I try to use whole can in recipes because it's annoying when you have leftovers. Then we're also just going to add in a touch of vegetable broth to help thin this out a bit. And then you can go ahead and cover this, bring it to a boil, and then let it simmer down until it reaches the consistency that you want. Just keep in mind that once you turn the heat off, the chili will thicken slightly. And if you wanna make your chili extra creamy, you can take an immersion blender and just blend a little bit of it. It helps make the stew part a little thicker which I personally enjoy. So then you can top your chili however you want, use vegan cheese, tortilla chips here, I'm keeping it pretty simple, with some chopped chives and avocado. This chili is really satisfying and you gotta try it. Next up, we're making some pumpkin and chai spiced donuts. I would say this is more of a desserty recipe. So great, you know, to enjoy after your pumpkin chili. So we'll start with the dry ingredients. Again, I love to use oat flour because it's cheap and budget friendly. And we're adding in a ton of warming spices. Make sure you check out the blog post for all the details. All these recipes will be linked below. And some baking powder and whisk everything together. And I promise this is already gonna smell amazing because of all of those yummy chai spices. And then now for the wet ingredients, we're using some almond butter. I feel like this flavor works really well with the chai. And it also keeps these donuts nice and creamy. So we'll be using that plus some pumpkin puree. And then we'll use some brown sugar for our sweetener, but you could also use coconut sugar if you wanted to, and some non-dairy milk. And then you're just going to whisk everything together until the sugar has dissolved and the pumpkin is easily mixed in with the liquids. And again, add the wet to the dry and mix it until you get a nice batter and most of the clumps of the oat flour have sort of melted 
distributed, I don't know. I personally like to use a cookie scoop to fill my donut molds. I think that's easier. And I also really recommend using silicone donut molds. The donuts come out a lot easier than those metal donut tins. You always end up denting your donuts when you use them. At least that's my personal experience. So we'll fill those up, pop them in the oven. The donuts will get a nice rise. And when they come out, they'll look a little bit something like this. You want to let them cool in the tray for a few minutes, but then you can carefully remove them and transfer them to a cooling rack. And what is a donut without a good glaze? So today we're making a pumpkin glaze. I think this is just a nice fun twist. So we'll use some vegan powdered sugar, just get organic and then it's vegan and add a little bit of pumpkin puree, lemon juice, and then a touch of plant-based milk. And I personally like to add a pinch of salt. I just find it helps balance everything out and whisk that until it's nice and dissolved. And then you can go ahead and dunk your donuts in. You can make the glaze as thick or as thin as you want. This glaze that I made is a little bit on the thinner side. So after I put the donuts on the rack, as you can see, it sort of slid down the sides and coated all of them. But if you want a more of an icing, just put less almond milk or maybe skip it entirely. But these donuts are super delicious. Definitely gonna be a fall staple for me because I love chai. They're great with coffee or a cup of chai. Who would have guessed? And then last but not least, we're going to be making a classic pumpkin bread. Can you go wrong with pumpkin bread? I don't think so. This recipe is super simple as well, made from very budget friendly ingredients. So as always, we're going to start out with our dry ingredients using oat flour and some pumpkin pie spice, as well as baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda. And we're going to add salt and then whisk all of this together. And then for our wet ingredients, as you will see here, we're going to be using a thickened flax egg, which will help hold the bread together, some coconut sugar, or again, you can also use brown sugar, some pumpkin puree and some nut butter. I'm using almond butter, but you could also use another nut or seed butter you like. And then we're going to be adding a good amount of lemon juice. So kind of like what we did earlier, the lemon juice is going to react with the baking soda in the oven. So you just wanna make sure your baking soda is nice and fresh. This is a great reaction and it gives more of a rise than baking powder. And I wanted this pumpkin bread to be light and fluffy. So that's why I decided to go with that. Um, but yeah, just touch your baking soda because if it's not fresh, your pumpkin bread will be flat. So add the wet ingredients to the dry. You should get a pretty thick mix like you can see here. And then it's ready to bake. I guess you could fold in some chocolate chips or pumpkin seeds if you wanted to get fancy, but you're just going to line a loaf pan, pour that bread batter in, and then use a spatula to smooth out the top and put this in the oven until it's nice and fragrant and golden and delicious. I promise your house is gonna smell amazing. And then you can go ahead and transfer this to a cooling rack. And then once it's cool, slice, dig in and enjoy. All right, friends, and there you have it. Leave a comment down below and tell me if you like pumpkin and sweet recipes or savory recipes more. I feel like sweet recipes are more popular and I definitely love pumpkin and sweet recipes. But I gotta say, if I had to choose one, I would probably lean more savory because I just love the creamy texture gifts to like soups and curries and that baked pumpkin mac and cheese is out of this world. So if you're gonna try anything, I recommend that, or the chai donuts. But as always, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you are enjoying the fall festivities and even if you're not a pumpkin person, still finding some joy in the season of life and weather. And I look forward to virtually seeing you soon. If you wanna see more of me in the meantime, be sure to head on over to my Instagram page. I post more recipes over there and I'm on there pretty much every day. So check that out. If you don't want to, that's cool too. Have a nice life, but I'll hopefully see you soon. Bye.